ni te nei kapa. A nei rā tō rōpū, tō rōpū kaitiaki, e mana ko hea i whakamaka tauria e o koutou tūmanako i o koutou moe moe iā. Ha, katahi anō, kāre anō e mutu. Kai te takataka haere tai atu ki te wā, kia horo i a mai rā, e rā te kā wanataka tēnā i whakaitia, hei kreeme. Kia hora i a rātou ringa, kai e rā ngā hara e hara nei, kai rungi a tātau o te wairo. Nō reira tēnei tamihi kia o koutou, kā re tōro a tāku nei tū, ko a tai mai. Ko a tai mai, pēnā o ki rā, ki ahuriri, kai tēnā paraere, kai te wairo, E hama mama i te papa kai te wairo. Ko nga ta tumak, kia whakawā atea ka puta mai o koutou whakaaro e pāna ki te kaupapa nei. Nō reira, kā re tōro, tēnei te mihi, nā mai hara mai, whakatau mai, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, huri nō tēnā tātai. Nei tērā mai nā iwi, tātou, tātou, nei. Tu te mai nga iwi, tātou, tātou e, pai a te maramatanga, me te aroha e nga iwi, ki a kotakotahi, ki a kotahi a tātou, tātou. A kāpiti hono tātai hono, rātou kua mihi a kua tangihia. Kāpiti hono tātai hono, hoki mai rā ki a tātou te kanohi ora, e pikau hia e nā ngā tūmanako, ngā wawata, ngā moi moi a i waihotia. Te nā koutou, kia ora humai tātā. Kia ora nga tātou, my name's Leon Symes, the chairperson for Tātou Tātou Te Wairua Trust. Just a, I'd like to welcome everyone here today in our third uh, hui in this next round of engagement uh, with our members regarding the final PhD structure and uh, asset arrangements in terms of our settlement. So those of you who are here with, uh, with us in November, thank you again for turning up. And those that are new again, um, uh, hopefully you, you find the, the presentation we're about to see uh, very uh, informative and, and uh, an opportunity is there for you to provide uh, your feedback on uh, the particular questions that we're asking. The booklet and this presentation is just a mere snapshot of where the current um, trustees are at. Um, we've taken your feedback from that August round and, and hopefully have put it into some models and some uh, uh, concepts that are more, with a bit more detail there for you to understand the direction we're taking. Um, so just look to firstly uh, introduce our trustees. Uh, uh, a key part of the trust is, uh, is engagement. Uh, we need to know, we need to make sure that our members know who, the, who they want to engage with and who, who they should engage with through to bring your opinions through to the table at the, at the trust. So I'll just get each of the trustees to just briefly introduce themselves and briefly introduce which particular kahui currently they represent so you get an idea of who, who they are. So, yeah. uh, kia ora, my name is Peter Munro. I'm one of two trustees for Whakaki Nui Arua. Uh, Heta Koko is the other one, but he's back at home. And I, along with Richard Nini, are the two representatives for Inipiti Marae, Tarenga Marae, Putahi Marae, and Rinini. Kia ora tata kato. Kia ora tata kato. I'm Oha Mia, and I'm one of the trustee rep for Tawaru Tukutere Trust Tua. We have 46 Hapuri rep, and it's not shown in the book, so thank you. Yeah, that's Kailu Marae, Kauara Ki, Te Aki Wai, Tō Te Kaupiti. Thank you. Kia ora tata katoa, ko hui a hui a tatou tu ingo. Ko te kaitiaki o te kāhui ngā tokori mā hina marahi. Ko tētai atu kaitiaki ko Carla Morrell. Kia ora katei. Janina Sines, Ngā Te Rā Hai Tāka. So I'm here and my sister is looking after the kāinga, Pauline. Pauline's our other rep. And Vavia, mainly one out on the road. Um, looking forward to engaging and uh, getting your feedback. 
and myself and Moana Rongo are the two representatives for Rongo Hini slash Nai Taraka So it just gives you an update on trustees. You may not have known who they are, but um, as I said before, we, we wanted to make sure you can um, engage with them um, directly because you understand some people are a bit of whakama, getting up at a bigger meeting to say some words. Um, afterwards, when we have a cup of tea, you know, go up to your trustees and your particular kawi to approach them to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them because we want to make sure that we get as wide a reach as possible. And also part of our pushes too is for the registrations. We need to make sure that we continue on um, gathering as many registrations as we can because the many more people we get involved, the many more they're informed of the decisions that we need to make because these decisions that we make now have repercussions for the next you know, 20, 30 years. Um, so it's, it's, it is a responsibility. Um, we need to take that responsibility seriously because we are shaping the future. When you shape the future, it has a long-term impact on how we best utilise the settlement. So the presentation today is broken up into um, basically uh, the three sections. We've got the um, uh, presentation itself, which will kick off. It's about a 20-minute video to watch. It's just a, a graphical presentation of what's in the booklet. And then we've got a Q&A session uh, after that. So a lot of people wanted to um, get a bit more detail around uh, what's in, contained in the booklet or ask specific questions. Uh, we'll be, um, I'll be up the front and then the other trustees will be helping to to answer those questions. And then, as I said before, we'll break for a cup of tea and that's when you can have the more one-on-one -on -one conversations with trustees. So, so basically the presentation uh, you're about to see is, is, like I said, a combination of all your feedback that have come, come together. Um, we did uh, the, yeah, come some key aspects in the feedback, um, particularly around, you'll see, uh, an independence process uh, that came through quite clearly. Um, and two particular models uh, originally, when we came out in uh, August, we had a, a spectrum of concepts. At one end, we had a devolution. At one end, we had our amalgamation. Now, they're just concepts in a, in a spectrum. Our members wanted the detail that came underneath that. So this is what we're presenting today, is that detail. Um, we'll move, the, I guess, the, the spectrum in a bit. We know we can't have full amalgamation. We cannot have full devolution. There's some particular aspects around... Um, Devolution, uh, as for such, you know, we, we need to have um, Tato Tato needs to exist. The Crown recognises only Tato Tato because it was one comprehensive settlement. So we needed Tato Tato needs to stay. But at the same spectrum with our amalgamation, there was a strong preference to retain the existing kind of kahui structure or ropus. Um, so in, uh, in both models, you'll see both of those entities in terms of representation still exists. Uh, and then with the other feedback was around the asset arrangements. Um, clearly, there's some strong feedback regarding keeping the asset together. Um, that's just a, uh, a, you earn more from a, a larger capital base. But at the same time, at the other end of the spectrum, there's a little bit of um, diversification, right, and giving some to the group, uh, the ropu, and keeping some um, just so that represents a bit more mana motahake around some of those groupings, but having a lot more control around certain assets or certain portion of the asset. So, um, other than that, I'll, uh, the health and safety stuff, you've would have came up the stairs. There's probably staff here at the at the James Cook. They're about to direct us in the right directions. The Fatty Paku is just straight down there. You'll see it just on the left if you need to go. If anyone has any issues with parking, you have to leave. You know, just make the, make it known to the ladies at the desk there um, to make sure that you know you don't get parking fines because they're a bit Nazis here. I heard. So you want to look at that. So without any um, further ado, we'll just play the presentation. And uh, if there's any, further, any questions after that, we'll, we'll get into it. Go. Cool. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai, haere mai. Thank you for joining us today in our second round of engagement hui to plan for our prosperous future. We are Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust. 
the Post Settlement Governance Entity, or PSGE, for the iwi and hapū o te rohe o te wairua. It is our responsibility, on behalf of our iwi and hapū, to manage the redress that will be received as part of our settlement with the Crown. In August this year, we held our first round of engagement hui across nine locations in Aotearoa. Our trustees sought your feedback on our values, aspirations and principles, and on proposed concepts for how our representation and asset ownership structure could look in the future. It was great to see so many whānau participating, and new faces too, with many tuning in to watch the live-streamed videos and sending us their thoughts online. We received invaluable feedback from you during this time, which has shaped our trustees' mahi over the last two months. Now we're coming back to you to kōrero some more. Today's hui is an opportunity to hear more about the feedback you have provided so far and to talk through our refined values, aspirations and principles and models for representation and asset ownership. We want to know if we have heard you correctly and if you agree with the proposals we present. What you tell us during this hui is critical to help shape the thinking on our future representative structure and about asset ownership arrangements. The presentation covers the key points in your information booklet. Following this presentation, we will have 30 minutes for you to ask any questions you may have. Katahi ka kaputi tato, so you can meet and talk to your representatives and our support teams who are here today. Also, if you are not yet a registered member of Tato Tato o Te Wairua, we can help you register today. We are back on a hikoi across Aotearoa, holding our second round of hui in Wairua, Ahuriri, Te Whanganui Atara, Rotorua, Kirikiriroa, Tamaki Makaurau, Te Papai Ioia, Wai Hōpai, Me o Tautahi. We are presenting exactly the same information at each hui, which will cover a recap of our August hui and what we asked of you, a look at the feedback we received from Fano, our aspirations, values and principles, considering the refined approach, our recommended approach for representation, two models as options for our asset management. Your feedback is important. We want to know we have heard you correctly and if we're on the right track. What you tell us today will directly impact on the models our trustees recommend to you for voting on next year. Remember, it's you, our people, who ultimately decide on the future of Tato Tato. We will now focus on the areas where we want your feedback, thoughts and questions. Firstly, your aspirations, values and principles. In 2012, a series of workshops were held to identify our aspirations as we worked towards the settlement. At our August engagement hui, we asked you to tell us whether these aspirations were still relevant to you today. These are important as they will help to guide Tato Tato o Te Wairua as we move forward. When providing feedback, we ask you to consider do the aspirations, values and principles still fit for our Fano, hapu and iwi? How would you like us to operate? Do these best reflect your aspirations, values and principles? What might be missing? We will now look at the aspirations, values and principles which have been updated and refined to reflect what you have told us. Our updated and refined vision is Tato Tato o te wairua, he iwi motuhake, he tangata orangake. Our updated and refined aspirations centre around the well being of our iwi, hapu, and whanau. They are social well being, restoration of health and social conditions for our iwi and hapu, cultural well being, Restoration and protection of the cultural identity of our iwi and hapu. Environmental well-being. Revitalization of the local environment and restoration of our role as kaitiaki of our natural resources. Economic well-being. 
rebuilding an economic base for our iwi and hapu and reassertion of our tinoranga tiratanga. Our refined values and principles focus on the areas that you told us are most meaningful to you. They are wairuatanga, fostering our unique features of mana whenua and tangata whenua. Rangatiratanga, your right to be the architect of your own future and development. Manakitanga, respecting, nurturing and caring for others. Kaitiakitanga, guardians of ngā taonga tukuiho, te taiao. Whanaungatanga, our kinship is determined through blood and whāngai, whakapapa. These refined aspirations, values and principles aim to reflect the feedback you have given us. So, have we heard you correctly? Do these aspirations, values and principles reflect the way you believe Tato Tato should be guided in our mahi? E anga whakamua na te waka, forging a new path. We will now look at the refined models for our future representation and two models as options for our asset management structure. What we asked of you. At our previous engagement hui, we presented you with three asset and representation concepts. There were devolution, whakatoha toha, collaboration, mahitahi, amalgamation, kotahitanga. Each of these concepts could be applied separately to assets and representation arrangements or parts taken from each to create a new model. They reflect possibilities at each end of the scale and a middle option. In August, you told us what you thought of these concepts and why. What aspects you like and what parts you don't like. We have listened to your views and brought them together to develop a recommended representation approach and two new models for the future structure of Tato Tato for you to consider. A representation approach could be seven ropu, like the existing kahui groups, but based on rohe and tipuna. The new models for you to consider are Model 1, Fakatopu, Consolidated Ownership, Shared Management of Assets for the Benefit for All. Model 2, Kanoro, diversified ownership. Ropu owns some assets and Tato Tato owns some assets. We will now talk more about each of these options. From your feedback, many Fano want to continue on the path that we have forged through the settlement process so far, being grouped by kahui or clusters of hapu for representation, then coming together under one umbrella group. After considering your feedback, the initial trustees recommend the following representation approach for Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust. Seven Ropu, like the existing kahui groups, but based on rohe and tipuna. This means that each ropu will include hapu that whakapapa to that tipuna and marae that are based within that rohe. Each ropu would elect its own two representatives, including at least one ahikā as trustees for Tato Tato. You would choose one ropu for the purposes of voting to elect your trustees. You can also list other ropu as part of your registration with Tato Tato if you have a whakapapa connection to one or more hapu within those other ropu. We also need to decide if there should be the option for a ropu to leave Tato Tato or Te Wairoa if it decided that it wanted to be independent. If our people want this to be able to happen, the Tato Tato trust deed would need to be amended. This would be done as part of the vote early next year on the structure of Tato Tato or Te Wairoa Trust. We have outlined a process in your information booklet on how this would work. The key principles are that high voting thresholds ensure fairness and a robust process. All adult registered members of Tato Tato would need to vote to approve the framework as this ensures transparency for all. 
Adopu could not trigger an exit at any time. They would have to do it within a certain period so Tato Tato has certainty going forward. If Aropu becomes independent, they would no longer be a part of Tato Tato, not have any trustee representatives on Tato Tato, and remain connected to Tato Tato through a formal agreement for cultural redress and rights to purchase RFR land. This is your choice, Fano. If you think it is important for Ropu to have this option, we can include it in the special resolutions that you will vote on early next year. Now we will look a bit closer at the models for our asset ownership arrangements. All this information is contained in the information booklet from page 18 onwards. The first model is Fakatopu, consolidated ownership. In this scenario, Tato Tato owns and manages all assets for the benefit of all the iwi and hapu o te rohe o te wairua. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets, so no asset is given to a specific ropu, and all ups and downs in performance of assets are shared. The second model is kanorau, diversified ownership. Here, each ropu would own some of their own assets and be responsible for those. Tato Tato o Te Wairua Trust also owns some assets. Ropu and Tato Tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Let's now look at the key features of the two models. Remember, these models are based on your feedback and are not final. Your feedback today will help shape these further. We'll start with Whakatopu, Consolidated Ownership. Key features of this model are Tato Tato owns all the deferred selection properties, the Patunamu and Farerata forest interests, and any right of refusal land purchased in the future. Tato Tato manages these assets for the benefit of all. All ups and downs in performance of assets are shared, as are all risks, costs and administration. Everyone shares in the whole of the assets. Tato Tato distributes profits to Dorpu annually, reinvests income for future generations and funds operations. Grouping assets will create economies of scale, guided by collective decision-making. In comparison, kanoro, diversified ownership, means that ownership of assets is shared. On settlement, ropu could be allocated a percentage of all cash and assets, with the remaining cash and assets pooled in tato tato. Ropu and tato tato can engage in a management policy to share administration of commercial assets. Under this model, profits and losses are incurred by the ropu from the assets that they own. For commercial properties, a ropu will need to instruct Tato Tato to exercise a right to purchase a deferred selection property or future RFR site. Dispute resolution processes will be put in place if ropu cannot agree on ownership of certain assets. Cultural reduce relationships remain with Tato Tato. So, those are the two refined models. To see these in more detail, go to pages 18 to 21 of your information booklet. It's important to understand that what you have seen today is not final. We are simply seeking your feedback to determine if we have heard you correctly in August and if we've got it right. Today we want your feedback on our aspirations, values and principles, our representation approach, our two asset management models. Let's now recap. We are holding the second series of engagement hui to check we've heard you correctly and seek your feedback on the refined models. In February next year, we plan on holding a ratification process on the special resolutions required by our trust deed, where we will ask you to vote on our potential asset and representation arrangements. 
What we recommend to you then will be heavily influenced by what you tell us today. We anticipate that in early to mid-2018, our settlement legislation is likely to pass its final reading and become law. That will bring an end to over 30 years of mahi on this important kaupapa. However, it is just the beginning of our new era. By the end of August 2018, we will need to complete the amendments to the trust deed by special resolution and in October there will be new trustee elections. It's an incredibly busy but exciting time for our whānau and we are grateful you are here on this journey with us. You can provide feedback on the feedback form at the back of your information booklet or through our online feedback form on the Tato Tato website or on our Facebook page. Remember, it is you, our people, who decide on the final asset and representation arrangements. In 2018, all adult registered members will have the opportunity to vote on the special resolutions. So please check with Fano to ensure they're registered. If not, tell them to head to our website now. We'll now have questions and answers. Before we do, we have the following ground rules. Please respect others and remain quiet so that their questions can be heard clearly. Please identify yourself when you speak so we can record your name. Please keep questions related to the aspirations, values and principles, the recommended representation approach or the two asset ownership models outlined today. For other matters, please talk to one of your representatives. Noreira from all of us here at Tato Tata o Te Wairo Trust, ngā mihi nui kia koto katoa. Mauri ora. Well, thank you, Fani, for listening to that. Um, I hopefully it stimulated some thinking within your head to ask some valuable questions. Um, as you see, it's it's not easy having these discussions. Um, it is quite unique that a PSG entity has come out to its members to ask them what do they want for the future. Usually these sort of questions are already predetermined, pre-made, and, and this flows on and rolls on to the next phase. Um, the research that the trustees have done in terms of existing PSG structures pretty much started with, as you've seen, one one consolidated approach and started from that, and then move, are moving through now to more the Model 2 kind of option. Um, but to saying that, um, we were giving, like to give our members the decision on what part of that process they want to start at. Do they want to start closer to the Model 2, or do they want to go through the same process as um, the other PSGs have gone through in terms of starting with a consolidated approach, building up the asset base, and now look to do um, Model 2, which is the diversified. It's up to... Our members to make that decision if it's start with the, the process that others have gone through or start on a different path rather than it be decided for for you now so that's the two models but going back to that um, the values and principles and aspirations we've taken a lot of there was a lot of um, kupu around around all that and we've kind of con trying to consolidate it down a bit more into those five particular areas but there's other values and principles that sit under in all those areas. Um, it's key to remember that we looked at the, also the aspirations and the vision and did a refresh on that um, to, to make a fresh start, I guess, um, with, the, with the, those kind of aspects. Uh, the work that was done through the Tita's Times um, presented a good base to start off with, but um, going through it now and refining it, getting our kaumato kahui involved as well to provide input in that provide some more kind of structured, up-to-date approach um, to those values and principles. So that's a, a, just a refresh and recap on, on the values and principles. Um, the two main areas is around that representation structure. Um, we got a lot of feedback regarding uh, we should be using marae, we should be using hapu, but with marae there's over 40 uh, marae, with hapu there's over 100 hapu having a, a governance structure with that many representatives on uh, is quite uh, onerous and cumbersome. And we've found that um, the, the, the kahui or rupu based approach we're proposing is the best way to move forward. 
our members are familiar with that. Um, uh, they're used to that kind of approach and structure. Um, we do recognise that the, uh, what's got us to this far has been based on the Crown process, because Crowns use hapu uh, as the, the, the basis for, for, for any treaty settlements. Um, some of the, the, the hapu contained on page 16 are not there, some others that are there shouldn't be there. Um, so we're looking at going through and re refreshing that and re giving the opportunity for the raw poo themselves to determine how best they want to structure, whether that's by hapu or whether that's by marae. So not having a uniform policy across blanket that we have to match because, we, because previously that was a Crown policy. We don't have that kind of restrictions in place now with ourselves. It's up to the individual raw poo to determine how best they want to structure themselves in terms of that representation. If it's marae based, fine. If it's hapu based, Escape to buy too. So it gives that flexibility. The, the law need to tell Tata Tata how they want to see their law structured. It is issues around the numbers of law and all that, but we need to work through that as well and kind of come to an agreement on um, uh, between law So this is a discussion that's actually got to happen back within the law not for Tata Tata to tell the law this is how you're going to be. So, but in terms of Tata Tata's role in that representation, it needs to be ensured that you know it's fair transparent accountable representation you know, we just can't have certain groups hijacking certain rupu we need to make sure that there is a balance so that everyone gets a, the opportunity to be represented everyone gets the opportunity to be um, benefit as well so I mean, that's kind of tata tata's role in that but we want the, the rupu themselves to come to that agreement that's they need to, to dialogue through that process themselves but we will support them through that process because we understand some Ropu need some capacity, capability to have these discussions. They need to set up their own formal structures, entities. Um, so we'll work through a process with them to, to develop that and develop their capabilities. Now, with the, also with the representation approach, you've seen there's a, this concept of independence. Um, it came through quite clearly, um, particularly with Rungumo uh, Hini Nai Tarakato. They want to run through an independent process and go independent themselves. So. That's just a mere reflection of our feedback to where we got, where we, where we received. Um, for all that process to occur, all that framework to, to occur, it has to be a, um, approved by all the members of Tato Tato that that framework is in place. Currently, we have no framework in our trustee for that to occur. Uh, it will be uh, up to our members to, to vote on whether that recommendation for that Vulpu independence process occurs. Um, and as I said, there's some detail on page 17 around that independence process. That's still work in progress. We've got some work, work to go through it to develop that, flesh it out, you know, what would a detail look. Um, so our members are, are informed that when they do, do go make the decision uh, of our recommendation, they understand exactly how it's going to work and how it will impact. Um, with that, this raises some few, few questions regarding and we're having this discussion about what part of the asset or part of the settlement uh, independent rope we would take, um, as well as what part of um, the income or benefits a particular rope might, uh, might, might receive. Um, through the discussions with the, ourselves, it's is equal fair. Now, we understand that certain rope may have incurred greater treaty breaches, so certain rope may have a larger population certain rōpū may have a larger area of interest. Now, how, can, how do we balance that out with, within the settlement? Now, is there a formula, is there a framework that we need to work through to make sure this is fair? At the end of the day, it has to be fair. Fair and equal may not be the same thing in this, this respect. So that's quite a difficult concept, to, well, difficult question to ask, um, but, but we've asked it in the booklet at the back. Uh, we want to know our members' uh, thoughts on that, on that process. Is it relevant to have those aspects included in any kind of asset, asset uh, formula, income distribution formula. Now, in terms of the in terms of the models, um, the two models that we've got there, um, they are the, hopefully the reflection of our members' feedbacks in terms of the two particular approaches um, to asset uh, ownership, asset asset management that we're looking at, um, kind of providing the detail to. Um, questions have come up so far regarding have you done financial analysis, what are the risks, what are the certain parameters around this. Um, or at the moment we are going through that process of developing the financial analysis, looking at what the risks are for either raw model, um, what kind of um, parameters need to be put in place 
to make sure the settlement at the end of the day needs to be protected. Um, whether it's, we're here to make sure that there's something in the future for our mokopunas to, to build upon. So we need laying that foundation now. Um, hopefully uh, the two models there represent what our members have provided in, in the feedback. As I said before, one provides a focusing on building the asset base up because that's what we know all the, the we have done. They've gone through that consolidated approach, built the money up and then, then moved to a, a diversified approach. Uh, whereas the other model, particularly the diversified approach, starts off with a bit of um, sharing over the asset because we understand that a lot of the groups, when they came together, want to do stuff now. They want to get on and do stuff at the, at the Hopu level rather than having to go back to another entity to ask to do something. They want a bit of, um, you know, mana motahake is kind of more reflected in, in the model too because that came through quite loud and clear there. Our members want to you know, have the ability through their Hopu to express their mana motahake through, through ownership. Whereas mana motahaki through the consolidated approach is more represented through kaitiaki tanga. For the particular asset set within your area of interest, you would get the point directors, you would get to be the liaison persons for that particular asset. So two different concepts with um, how you how we represent Rupu interests in, in the two models. Kapai? Anyone got any any key questions regarding what we've seen and what I've discussed? Um, yeah. So the question I'd like to ask, and thank you very much for the presentation, I think the structure that you've got today with the keynote speakers and the video and people being here to answer questions is great. So he mihi tēnei, ki mai taku The question I have <coughs> relates to the slide that was up there that described social, cultural, economic and environmental aspects yep. of our aspirations. My concern is that at the centre of that slide was Fano hapu iwi, yep. which I'm very happy about. Yep. And then each of the social, cultural and economic descriptors, Lips. Fano was, was left missing. out. Yeah. Yep. I'd like the explanation for that. I think it was just a typo, that's all. Thank yep. you very much. I have no further issues. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, further, you haven't got any questions regarding ad, other aspirational questions. I, I think um, that's um, the non, more non-controversial aspect of the presentation. As soon as we move into parts of the, the representation and models, that in terms of the drive a bit more discussion. But uh, any further aspirational questions? Um, kia ora. I was just, in regards to the aspirations, um, is mental health and wellbeing incorporated would that go under social well-being or would that be its own aspiration? It potentially could come under um, social well-being. We haven't quite quite um, detailed those out just yet. Social, cultural, social, cultural yeah. It could, there's a lot of aspects like that that can fit across multiple well-beings. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be looking at something. You know, we haven't just discussed it further, but it provides the context, hopefully, to have any particular issue incorporated in, into that. I definitely, yeah, I think it's something that could be, maybe we have a fifth mm. aspiration where we add mental yeah. or health, health, health related. Or yeah. Haora, yeah. Haora is a separate one. Yep. Yeah. Kapai. Especially for, mm. yeah, this generation. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I Hakara Tapani from Te Ranga Marae. Just a uh, question on. So I'm a big fan of the consolidated approach. You know, I'd rather us be, or rather Tato Tato be one big fish than mm. one medium-sized fish and two small fish, yep. you know, yep. or three, whatever it is, yeah, you know. Yeah, whatever it is, yeah. um, and, I've, and I come from a very um, corporate mm. um, career. My question is around the, um, the economic side of things. What are the sorts of conversations about what might be happening in 10, 20, 30, 40 years' time, especially if we build up this asset base? Mm. Like, what are we? What are the law you thinking? What are the trustees thinking? Mm. What's being spoken about? At, at this stage, with 
we haven't had any uh, detailed discussion about you know, um, what that may look like. Um, we have um, started to engage financial analysis in terms of if we keep it together, consolidated versus if you diversify it, what will it look like in 25 years? Yeah, and get a, and get an understanding of what the the value, of like financial value, will look like. Um, but at the same time, we haven't done uh, what kind of value if you put on uh, mana motahake because uh, your financial answer, that just looks like financial side, but mana motahake, by having the diversified approach as well, doesn't incorporate that. So we need to kind of balance that out in terms of that. But through the mana motahake, there is a discussion within between each of the law people to decide on which aspirations, what are their priorities, what they need to look at developing first, because we're leaving that uh, to them to, to decide you know, what their priorities will be. Is it housing? Is it is it the environment? What do they want to look at first? Rather than tata ta to make a blanket decision that we're gonna do housing now, whereas another Rupu it may not be that priority, it might be something else. So we need to have that flexibility um, about delivering the needs of the benefits at the grassroots to make sure it matches what's required on the ground. And in, in other Rupu, is there anything specific that they might be talking about? So for example, uh, so for example, Tuaropaki, you know, they've got geothermal power station, yep. you know, like something that's quite concrete and easy to buy into, and I understand that the different ropu might have different views on what they would do mm. with you mm. know, their allocation, however mm. it might end up. Mm. But is there, like, is there anything quite exciting that they're talking, you know, like is there, I don't know, um, is there greenhouses, is there, <laughs> uh, is there, like, is there anything significant that, not, and I'm not saying yeah. that they're committing to it, I'm yeah. just saying that's what's being what, thrown what, out in yeah. conversation, you know, what, exciting what, stuff yeah. like that. What, what are they looking at, you know, you've got the, you got the you know, new government coming in with trees, Minister for Trees, you know, so that's a start there. You've got the Rocket Lab out of Maya, there's tourism there. You've got Honey is another industry. So all those ones that currently everyone's kind of engaged in uh, is kind of what they're looking at start off with. But there needs to be something unique for us, you know. It kind of draws, it, draws everyone in. Opening the railway line, bringing in tourists through busing, you know, coming to Kaununu Marae to get a cultural experience, those sort of things, you know. You know, things that are kind of specifically related to, to home. Anyone got a question on the Lopu independence process? They understand that that process particularly and the implications it has. It is it is something that's come through loud and clear with the feedback. Um, the trustees have to put that, taking the feedback and try and put it into a process, framework process. All Tata Tata need to agree with that has to be, that particular process can be included in the trustee because we don't have it now. And then a particular Lopu once they go through that and if it's successful, have to. Um, will leave Tato Tato. But yet they haven't yet we haven't yet determined what they leave with and how that formula's worked out. So there's some key questions to ask about particularly those two, you know, the process, the framework and what's what, how how do we work out the allocation? Yeah. So very difficult questions and remind you the trustees are are are, are engaged with this. Quite quite detailly engaged. And so we just need our members to provide us a bit more direction and thoughts on that, on those two um, processes, because it's uh, it has an impact on, as I said, the the, the asset base. If I'm particular rupu, or particular rupus want to exit. But uh, in saying that, we we came together in 2009 at Rangiahu Marae to do this together. It's just natural that the option is open there to say that. Now, you, for the claims process, Crown told us to force us to come together. Now, you want to stay together to go forward. Well, so we don't want anyone on the waka who don't want to be on the waka and it creates litigation and upsets us down the process. So we want to make sure we're working together collectively going forward. Because you have a set period, then you know you're giving tata tata certainty. If you have this open for the rest of the, in terms of being, then you're not giving tata tata the um, assurances that it needs to make the investment decisions. Because you've got a potential rupu wanting to go, they need to make make sure that available asset base is them to go. It just restricts tata tata in, in saying what it can and can't do. 
it gives it a lot of um, hamstrings to begin with. And you don't want to hamstring a PSG. You need to make sure they have the right ability to go out, do the investments, make the, make the decisions in the best interest. Yeah, that's just a, a, a kind of a... So having a time frame set when that option is valid, available at the beginning enables that will to go through that decision. That's not to say that in 20, 30 years' time that particular provisional framework can be reintroduced to the trustee to have, it, have another discussion. It just gives Tatu Tatu a bit of certainty. Mm, exactly. Yep. Mm. Mm. Yep. Mm. Look, looking at the other PSGs, th those particular um, rope within those have taken you know 20, 30 years to get to that stage. It takes a long time to build up capacity at at that level um, to to get to 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 a point where they they are more confident. And it's about building capacity too. We understand that we need to get the right people into some of these rupu to help build up around the structures that need to, to occur to make sure that they are looking after the settlement. Because um, at the end of the day, it's protection of the settlement that is key because we all voted, ratified it. We all got to make sure to protect it. How have you managed to um, get a little bit more in regards to like statistics and regards to like registration and like getting rangatahi, um, what is it like rangatahi um, involved? involved. In, like um, yeah, has that? Yeah. Has so anything come about? Okay. Yeah. So one of those key 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 issues that come through from the, um, August was then how is rangatahi engaged in this process or how would, how can rangatahi participate? Um, so what we've done is through the engagement, or we've, we've, we're engaging um, uh, a local crew back at home to do a, a movie or to some kind of um, short script about what 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 it means to the rangatahi back at home. So we're going to use that as kind of a an engagement policy because we know our rangatahi lists exist online. They are they there. They, they that's what they see by by having a video or some kind of other rangatahi talking about what it means. So hopefully it stimulates other rangatahi then to participate in the conversation and be wanting to be a part of the process, hopefully register um, into the future, but also within with the trustee review that's um, looking at uh, establishing that Langatahi committee. So it is a formal structure within place within the trust itself. Kia ora tēnā koutou whānau. Um, tēnā koe, uh, tama, uh, your question. Um, I just want to re-elaborate on uh, what Leon had said. Um, I've just come back from Rungo Mai Wahine, from Mahia. Um, and, and in terms of that, um, for the rangatahi, um, our rangatahi back home did a bit of a short movie which was held at uh, Rua Faro Marae. And that was to um, sort of give that faith to our rangatahi, give them a voice. And um, that movie they uh, produced, I believe, was around some of our whenua that was taken. And one of them was our Blue Bay Motor Camp. And what they had found, now you've got to remember some of our rangatahi back in those days, hey, they're quite, they, were quite, they were babies. So they're now probably at your age and wondering why don't we have our motor camp anymore. So they um, took this movie and um, one of the girls, Anna Fanga, um, presented it quite well and Grace Orman and I thought they'd done a... a brilliant job um, bringing in our rangatahi and incorporating our rangatahi to do that far know is what our rangatahi need they need stabi you know stability sustainability all those sort of things and for them to be part of it our young ones made them come to that movie and have an understanding so to that question of yours um it is I, I'm, I'm right there behind you it's our rangatahi it's our they're our future and our mokopuna so that was just to sort of give you a bit of insight back home what our rangatahi are doing. And I think too, Leon, eh, they're still moving. Our rangatahi are going to keep moving, moving with Tato Tato, even though Lunga Mai Waitane wants to go independent. However, um, that's everybody's own personal preference. Um, for me, I live here, but I also go back home. So I've got a bit of a, a fin in one water and a fin in another <laughs> water, really, so I'm quite lucky. Um, but for our rangatahi in terms, they're still learning. Mm. And I think it's really important, like, um, you know, 
I wish that there's more of us coming to these hui's because they'll understand more. Yeah, because not everybody, you know, has the degree. Not everybody goes to uni. There's some that can't afford, so they just sit on the back bench of our marae and just sort of listen. And two, that, that, there's nothing wrong with that because that's how we learn. So um, kia ora for your question. I'm so, I'm, I'm just really happy that there's a young man here that's really pushing for rangatahi. And so um, keep mm. doing that, my boy. And, and then you'll see, you'll see the, the fruits of labour come through. Mm. Kia ora. Kia ora, thanks, Sean. Sorry, so when I went to the Christchurch um, meeting, um, it was obviously my first hui that I had mm. attended, and I'd noticed obviously that the rangatahi numbers were really, really low mm. in regards to attendance. Um, so after the meeting, I was really inspired, mm. um, and I really wanted to try and get more rangatahi inspired mm. to be mm. able to, to join and, and like attend all these hui so that they can get a better understanding. Mm. Um, so one of the questions was how can we obviously get the rangatahi involved? So mm. I created a massive Facebook page Oh, sorry, Facebook message group to um, see what their thoughts mm. were because they mm. obviously didn't come to the meeting mm. and a lot of them weren't even aware of mm. what we are, what mm. you guys, what we're all doing here. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, the, the biggest thing we're trying to get the rangatahi involved is like, how can we translate all these, mm. all this mm. so that the rangatahi understand? Mm. Because for me, yeah, I, I have a better, sorry. Oh. Um, I have a, a decent understanding with what this crop mm. is all about, but then there's a rangatahi back home, mm. especially that don't have, mm. like, mm. let's say, a, a, an educated background that, mm. where they can translate all this and get a better understanding. Yeah. So it's just like how, the thing for them was like, how can we, how, uh, how are they making us mm. better understand what we're yeah. trying to achieve? Put it, yeah, it's putting the messaging in a, in a context that they understand. That's yeah. what, yeah. And hopefully with uh, doing the video clips that uh, for Rugged and Wild, that we, that we instituted at the trust level, we'll put it in an, um, those that have uh, uh, interviewed on, on, on the video, we'll, we'll put it in a way that those rangatahi understand them, because they're rangatahi themselves, and we'll put it in, in that context to understand. But in terms of engaging, we, we understand that the rangatahi are not really kind of involved around coming to hui, because some of them have been put off in the, in the past by the, the older ones and what their, their behaviours at some of those uh, hui. Um, so we need to go where they are, which is, is what's in that media space, to, do, to, to make sure that they are A, engaged and A, informed about what's going on, and put it in a, in a manner that they understand. Um, so you mentioned something about the Rangatahi Council. Yeah. Is there capacity to have something like that? Yes, in the future. As part of the trustee review, we've got out to August next year where we incorporate a Camp Pacific Council um, to, to hear the Rangatahi voice. We've got, we've instituted the Kaumatua Kahui Council, which currently sits within the trustee that we have to do. They meet um, um, uh, monthly. They've been formulated and constituted as a group, advisory group. But at the same respect, we should be extending that to Rangatahi as well, uh, to balance it out, to get both, both aspects, because we want to make sure that's... Can we get the ball rolling faster in regards to getting Rangatahi involved? Uh, we can't get them involved. We just can't institute a, co uh, um, a council because that's a trustee review, which requires a 75% majority of the trustees, uh, the members to, to agree on so we're going to put that all together with all the trustee review changes after this process we're going through in terms of all the other aspects in here and incorporate as part of part of that process but then yeah. we've started in, in, a, in a way so we've started engaging and getting the feeling around how the rangatahi feel about treaty settlement and if they know anything about Tato Tato mm -hmm. so we just start and then see where we go from there. Anybody else have a question? In terms of, yeah. What's the name of that Facebook page? Oh, it's just a group that I've created. Um, it's like a YouTube group. Yeah, give us the name of it and we can post it up on our website as well. So, through our comms channels. In terms, moving on, in terms of the models in the book, yeah, we understand any questions specific around model one. Um, there is, there was a lot of preference, a lot of feedback regarding consolidating the ownership. Everyone understood the, the financial reasons right around that. Yeah, it's what other we have done. It's, yeah, it's kind of a stock take approach. There is a bit of um, Kaitiaki Tanga from a Rupu being involved in those processes, so there is a bit of 
um, involvement there, but not in terms of ownership. That's the, the complete difference between the two. Kia ora, everyone. Darren Tomo. A um, couple of questions. The first one um, goes back to the other one as well, is the registration. Uh, last week in August, we took about 7,000 registration, mm. so it may have gone up a bit. Um, was it the, the government thing? Um, somewhere around 28 to 30,000, possibly actually here. Um, one of the things I thought about is that when I did the census, um, I registered all my hapu. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so did my wife mm. and so did my kids. Mm. Between the four of us, mm. we're 16. Cool. Um, where you can only register one. Um, and the two models here, depending on which way they go, mm. the fact that I'm only represented in one mm. could actually mm -hmm. make an impact on, yep. especially model two. Yep. Yep. So, mm -hmm. I guess my question is, how is that going to How's that thing? Yeah. Going to so work? Just, yeah. Just to clarify that, when you register your vote, you indicated your, what was a primary vote for voting only for trustees, which is separate to what your whakapapa and tonal tournaments are, which is you can whakapapa to all kahui, then you would have uh, indicated in the registration form that you would put down those uh, hapu, marae that you affiliate to. So it was just for a fairness, I guess, that only one member has one vote for inviting on someone onto the trust or making a decision for the trust. It's not about how great your whakapapa is that you that you express that through the amount of votes you have. Yeah. Yeah, so it was just a fairness process, but we understand that that process with the initial registrations only went through indicating your primary hapu or primary marae. We'll need to go back now and go through a process of making sure that everyone wants to add additional hapu, additional mai, British or rōpū they affiliate to to have that included as well. So yeah. it's a process of review. We we'll started on that um, process um, with, with the engagement of our uh, project manager, Robert Ainsley, who's working, catching up on those that have registered but not yet validated. So we're making sure that everyone has will have the opportunity at some stage where we'll send out a, an email to everyone or contact everyone just to make sure that the, the details we have are correct, the affiliations they have put down are correct, they have the opportunity to add and change what, they, what they've put in. Yeah, I just yeah I just sort of wanted to answer because um, you mentioned it before that what's good for one is not good for the other. Yeah. So that's why I brought that up. Mm. Um, and the other thing is, are we improving on the registration? Yep. Cool. Yeah. Slow, but it's improving. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I think no, we're up to around about seven thousand now. It's we're about in the um, ratification phase. We had about six and a half, so we've got about five hundred additional registrations. But we know it's it's up to an individual to express their if they, they, they want to engage, you know, to put down their registration. Uh, a key point that came up in August uh, um, uh, engagement was, why can't we just uh, register everyone? Because you know, that's a bit, a bit illegal. You cannot put, put down everyone's <laughs> That answers my second question. <laughs> yeah, can't do that. Because <laughs> you've got to take the private notice and authority yeah. that you would consent to things. So. Yeah. Um, now, with the two models and that, there's, um, what is it, distribution of profits. Yep. Is there any, I don't know, um, can, can the individual hapus can actually they do what they want with that particular money? It'll be a distribution to the vōpū, and then that vōpū structure decides on what the priority is in there. Within that vōpū, our hapu, our marae. So it's, yeah, it's at that vōpū level they make that decision. Yeah, um, so there's no impact by the government saying we no, must... No, yeah. It's up to your priorities you want to set with your particular rōpū, is it where you want to see that money go, yeah. um, those profits. But at the back, uh, the point um, we need to raise is, well, what is that distribution to the rōpū? How is that formulated out? Yeah. And those issues of uh, loss. Yeah, I'm just sort of this. looking at it because we could also incorporate our own, like the Model 2 model, yep. Yep. where each rōpū yep, exactly. can actually... Yep. Yep. Put their money where they need it. Yep. So you can you can so, to say that you could have a model one at the Tata Tatu, but then have a model two at the Lopu level. Correct. That's, yeah, sort of, that's, that's where I was going. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, I guess going on your own, what are the consequences? Uh, as you see, you no longer be Tata Tata. You just all risks are borne by by you in terms of the the assets you receive. So um, there is no um, back foot backstop. Uh, whereas in the consolidated, uh, the diversified approach, if you took some assets and kept some in, 
you got that diversified because you got potentially two stream in, in, income streams. Whereas if you go on your own, it's yeah, you make the mistake. Yeah, it's, yeah, you, you you burn. Yeah, and I, th yeah, 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 that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then there's there's a couple of things in Wairo where I think they ask, can you come back? Ah uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> yeah. Well, that'll be up to up to the members of Tata Tata left to say yes, you can come back, but. Yeah, but there was, needs to be some safeguards in place, obviously, if you, uh, re you receive a property from the settlement, um, there should be some first right of refusal back from Tata Tato, just in case there is something that happens and they, that particular group who has to sell that asset, at least then Tata Tato gets the right to, to buy it back and make sure the asset's not lost and, or something like yeah. that. Yeah, or squandered, so yeah. Okay, um, and I think the last one is, oh, I've got it now. Yeah, I think I'll come back when I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, just two questions, yep. which is, if, if a Rōpū exits, is it approximately one-seventh of the assets that would go well, that, with them, or is yeah. it totally well, that's the, individual? That's the, yeah, that's the discussion they have on what that ratio is, based on population area loss, uh, treaty breaches. We need to have that discussion. Our members need to kind of give us, a, is that important? Is it equal? Because equal may not be fair. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, and is there any ability that if it all was to exit, that there would be a view on what their plan is to do with the assets, you know, like to make sure that, or is it just, all right, if they're allowed to exit, they can exit and they just it'll, do it'll what be they up, want? It'll be up to them. Oh. So. Only, only relationship um, Tata Tata has with an ex ex exiting Rōpū is that there's certain cultural redress we cannot devolve. The Crown only sees Tato Tato. So by having a relationship, a formal agreement between Tato Tato and that exceeding Rōpū is just a, I can remember an understanding of what those areas are in terms of their area of interest, their particular properties uh, that may come up they might want to look at. That's all that connection remains in terms of all other direct relationships. If a particular exceeding Rōpū wants to have a direct relationship with the councils, with any government agencies, it's up to that particular law to go out and discuss those issues. And oh, just one more question: um, What obligations do Tato Tato have to the Crown going forward? Like, are you expected to engage with them annually, or is there any like reporting requirements? Anything like no, that? No, no reporting requirements left. The, the Crown basically, once your bill is um, settled, settlement date, that's it. They kind of leave you leave you to your means to do how you want to do this. Um, there are some ongoing. Uh, relationship agreements through Crown. We're not too sure how this is going to impact with the new Crown Relationships manage, uh, Ministry, potentially with uh, Calvin Davis. There's some kind of there's some changes in that space happening. Um, so, but all those direct relationships it will remain with Tata Tata with the Crown. Any got any questions around Model Two and that diversified uh, model? It's it has, it's a hedge your bitch type approach, you know, but at the same time it allows those law people to do something on the ground, allows them to have more mana motahake, um, but it says that there's some risks with the asset. Um, but clearly there's, um, there has been strong feedback for both, and hopefully we've taken those three concepts, and understand the three concepts with this high level, and we're trying to narrow it down into two models, and then hopefully we will we could get to one model, but I'm saying that, you know, that's could. This is difficult. We may end up coming out with a recommendation um, that say, well, what do you think for model one and model two? And you will get to vote on model one or model two if we can't decide on one model. Because it is difficult to, to get to that. I think we're um, having those hard discussions at the trustee level, getting the advice that we need. But it may, it may mean that um, the members in the end will need to decide, as well as the independence process, um, including that. With Model 2, how do you know which assets the Rōpū will get and which assets the Tata Tata will get? So that's a discussion with the Rōpū that have them themselves and, and, and to, and between each other to decide on which particular assets. Now, with our settlement, was good because we didn't get a lot of properties with it. And so there's not a lot of um, debate, just a couple of forests, uh, about 24 other properties, which are easy to determine um, where, those, where they lie and which particular Rōpūs will affect. It's more to do with the portion of the share of the cash, cash. 
how much of that would go to a particular Rōpū. Because at the end of the day, that Rōpū is going to need to use that cash to buy back certain properties from Tato Tato. You know, it has to be a transaction there. Um, our settlement didn't have specific exemptions for Rōpū in it, because the Crown saw one collective settlement, one entity. So there are some tax and financial implications on those transactions. But we've got good advice. Um, you know, we have some lawyers and accountants that can work their way around it to make sure that we pay as much less as possible because we don't want to be spending our security settlement money giving it back to the Crown for tax. It's just a bit of a, yeah, dumb, dumb thing to do. Kia ora, I'm um, Dati Nako Parker. With Model 1, if the Rōpū decide to take Model 1, will they get um, help from Tato Tata or are they left on their own? Can they go for backup to Tato Tata for anything? Yeah, so Model 1 is a distribution to the Rōpū. It's just a distribution. So if annually the Rōpū receive an income stream from Tato Tata to help fund certain things they might want to do. Uh, at the same time, um, um, it enables them to be a part of a collective group to, to benefit as a collective. So under Model, under model 1, the, the, the beneficiaries of Tata Tata will be the Rōpū. Under Model 2, the beneficiaries are individuals to the Rōpū. If you fuck up to the Rōpū, you're a beneficiary of, 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 of the Rōpū. Okay. Whereas the Model 2, the, 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 the Tata Tata assets are there just to generate income, not to do any delivery of the services, because under Model 2, services are delivered by the Rōpū. Kia ora, Tata Katoa. Um, I'm just um, wanting to know if there's an opportunity that's presented to one of the hapu inside Tata Tata, would they still have to come back to um, the rest of Tato Tato to sell that opportunity? Commercial opportunity, um, let's say. Oh, they could potentially do it both ways through a, a Rōpū, the Rōpū that they are uh, within, to, to, to get them to uh, the idea, explain the idea, or sell the idea, or kind of get um, agreement within that Rōpū then to take it to Tato Tato, um, then, then potentially create a, a partnership if that idea is, it works out. So we want to enhance the Rōpū having decision-making over a particular idea, as well as Tato Tato supporting that at the same time. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, there are members of, ta of the iwi that um, are in business circles mm. and they do mm. get presented mm. uh, business opportunities mm -hmm. mm. quite often. And, um, mm whether it would be uh, you know, to their, op to their uh, advantage or, or not, whether mm. to bring those opportunities mm. to Tato Tato. Mm. Because mm. Yeah. Depends on which model it is. If it's Model 1, you know, there's one singular entity yeah. um, that can do that. And the Model 2, you will see that the side there's an asset holding company uh, with, that, takes yeah. the, that keeps the asset and, and how that will operate will be looking after the, it's the money generating machine. Yeah. that generates the money, so that you pension approach, approach that. As well, at the same time, there'll be little asset holding companies within the individual rōpū, because um, they normally need to control that asset and have safeguards around that asset as well. So they could potentially, um, do, as, a, as I say, it's a diversified approach to which one you, you potentially could go to. And that's just that. Well, you understand that asset holding kind of company approach? It depends on how much your percentage of your, I guess, um, allocation is that you leave in with an asset holding company, that you benefit from it. Um, it's designed to be as such that on on settlement date when an group is going to receive a benefit that they take out um, their proportion, they could take out all their proportion or they could leave all their proportion in. So it's a bit more complicated of a model. It comes down to Rōpū having that control over, you know, who's going to look after their asset. Is it with a Tata Tata asset holding company or we've got the facility and capability to build that asset holding company? And take and draw down a proportion of our allocation to start doing things. Kilda, just following up in the social cultural space, can I ask, moving forward, are we considering a whole of government approach clause in our work with the Crown or not? Is that part of the thinking? 
so part of the thinking as part of the settlement was there's the social economic revitalization strategy, SUS. Mm -hmm. And now currently Crown OTS are in reviewing those kind of all of government approaches. Because yeah. then you realise that it may not be working well for others and how best they can shape that. Um, with the new go incoming government, I'm probably anticipating that there is a shift in OTS towards more that post settlement stuff to look after these older governments to be that point of contact because a lot of strain and resources are going on uh, post settlement entities if they have to deal with a number of multiple government agencies simultaneously. So if we can, they can capture that area in one area that has the authority then to pull all those other government agencies together and work collectively together and that would be more beneficial for us. So that, that's good to hear because whatever the Crown view of that, mm. I'm interested in us articulating our own view of that so we don't end up having to negotiate yep. with seven different Crown agencies yep. over essentially the yep. same kind of kaupapa. Yep. They end, not only, you know, you were just talking about not wanting to pay back tax to the mm. Crown mm. on funds just mm. evolved, we also don't want to spend our money, money on, that. on doing the yes. Crown's business. Thanks. So it exactly. would be good to see that there yep. from our point of view. Kia ora. Yep. And it's realising that with both models, that, that work sits with Tato Tato. So the more you take out of Tato Tato and the consolidated approach, the more resources you're left with it to, to handle those. So those models or exiting Rōpū need to take that into consideration. You know, if you take a lot more out of the middle, then it's a lot left, less for it to, to do this work. That you make it clear to the, pe uh, the people who wish to take part of their assets out for themselves that they, their asset holding within uh, Tato Tato actually reflects the yep. fact that they have already taken theirs yep. out yep. and they won't get the same percentage yep. as the people who stand out. Yep. I yep. think that needs to be made very clear yep. um, so people are aware yep. that their percentage actually drops. Drops, yeah. mm. yep, no, exactly. My husband is a Maori, I'm a Pākehā, and my name is Gail McRoberts. <laughs> cool, ka pai. Oh, hini, hini. Huh? Hini, pihinga. Hini, pihinga. Hang on, Carl. Hang on, Carl. Hang on, Left Wairau 40 odd years ago, but always... Um, Wairau is my spiritual home. Um, we enjoyed a, uh, a, seven, uh, sorry, a third form um, reunion, 1967 Wairau College, and it was the most beautiful time speaking to people that appreciated growing up in a, in a um, caring, uh, close community, that was um, vibrant, looked after each other, um, and something that we all um, appreciated coming from. Um, my question is, um, well, I, I will agree with the uh, consolidated approach because historically um, the major settlements that have, um, that have been made to Naitahu uh, Tainui have been the consolidated pro approach initially to um, to form an asset base where you have real um, clout in, 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 in an e economic um, and whether we like it or not, um, this is the most important to fritter away mm. a, a legacy that is a one-off, one in a lifetime opportunity. Is to me is um, very dangerous. What we need to understand is that um, the hurt and um, injustices that were done to our tipuna along this process uh, historically um, can never ever be repaid. Mm, mm. The, 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 the money that, mm. that we received, the assets that we received, is only just a, a fraction of what, what really should have been returned. Mm, mm. But it is an opportunity. Mm. Mm. So, given the opportunity, comes with responsibility. Yep. So, it is really important mm. that, first and foremost, that we are mm. guardians of this asset. Mm. Mm. Be careful, be nurture it. Mm. Re 
Molly, I've, I've, I've wondered what is the role of, um, of iwi that have taken on uh, an mm. asset base in mm. Naitahu, especially one of the most successful uh, commercial entities in New Zealand, mm. a real powerhouse, mm. economic. Um, Tainui is now really big in the, mm. in the Waikato. Mm. Um, so th we have a potential to, to be like that. Mm. But it will take some time. Mm. They took 20 or 30 years to, mm. to, to, to develop that, um, mm. Does. That, that asset base, becoming a real ec economic engine. Mm. What I have issues with is what is our vision? Mm -hmm. We've talked about our, our, our uh, assets and how mm. it's going to be developed, mm. and mm. how it's going to be uh, administrated and governed. There is uh, something in, in the in the book that says something about Wairau being a ghost town and boarded up. I always come back to it is the people and it is the people. Mm. It is the people. Mm. So to me, we have to grow our people again. Mm. Um, the urbanisation of, of Māori that occurred through the 50s, 60s, mm. 70s, where most of our people moved into the into the cities, has had a lasting effect. Mm. Mm. Do we have a plan to mm. attract people back? Mm. Mm. Do we have Do we have the opportunities? Mm. Um, Whakapapa to me is, is is the key because without that connection. Mm that appreciation, that historical knowledge of where you're from and everything that comes from, that comes with, really makes uh, the people uh, that we are today. Mm. Uh, our, we talked about rangatahi, about the needs of rangatahi, and I'm, I'm so fortunate to have a young son that is learning uh, tamoko and it, um, it just been it's uh, with Derek Razali, and he's and mm. he's um he's finishing his course mm. very soon. So I'm very proud father. But he, to me, he's the future of mm. where we should be going. Mm. So that I understand. Mm. I think other are the key to where we go. But mm. they've got to understand. We've got to understand that there is an obligation to to, mm. to, to, to understand your whakapapa. Mm. All the stories mm. in mm. Takitimu book. Mm. Has anybody got Takitimu book? Because you really need to get it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's... Yeah. That gives you the insight on, yeah. on, on where we've come from. Yeah. And yeah. for young people, they have to make the connection. Yeah. And we yeah. have young people who are urbanised who have never been back to their home at all. Yeah. And that is my vision. Mm. You bring those people back. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia um, But there's a couple of points you've raised there about, um, to me, is that do we see ourselves as one to Wairo or do we see ourselves as Whakaki, Nuaka, Mahia, um, Wairo? Um, that answers a, a question about, you now. Where do we grab our benefits from? Where do we where do we look to go back home to, to make that connection? Um, so, a lot of people, you know, we, we through this process, the crown process that they've developed has kind of created these boundaries and borders between ourselves, which is what the crown does. Now is an opportunity to take stock and do we really need these boundaries and borders between us, or do we um, should this collectively move forward, or do we keep those boundaries and borders and because that's what we like and that's you know, I don't like the fucking you people. I don't like those people. You know, I like to stay on my own. Oh my. So, yeah. so yeah, those are the conversations we need here because it, it is it is an important discussion and there's a lot of responsibility because this will set the platform to the future and it's for the rangatahi that, that we want them to lay that foundation for them to come back and have that pathway into jobs that you know about cultural jobs, you know, tamoko jobs, you know, job, just jobs and anything that revitalizes our connection back home to say that we're proud. You know, to be connected back to Whitehall. Uh, looking for that vision to the future, using this as a platform to build that.
just in regards to the con um, consolidation model, mm. um, this might be me getting a bit too deep into into it, but in regards to the asset management, like how are we going to ensure, or are there like steps and stuff in, pro in, in place to ensure that the assets and stuff are managed if we do go with that model? And then in regards to saying that are the people that will be managing those funds and this land and all these things that we've got, um, will they be, what would we consider having like qualified people who have like, I don't know, qualified accountants yeah. and lawyers yeah. and et cetera. And then I think branching off that as well, like that's a massive opportunity for our rangatahi and people mm. now that um, there's obviously like people that are qualified accountants and mm. are currently mm. going to uni and mm. university and stuff like that's an opportunity for our people mm. to obviously invest their time and mm. the education that they had gained to mm. back into the community. Um, and then also branching off that, that's like an educational opportunity or like a scholarship opportunity yeah. for us, for rangatahi or even for anyone yeah. of any age to be able to, for us to provide like a scholarship mm. where we can send them to university to mm. be able to provide and put mm. all this money that we've invested in them back into obviously yep. this bigger picture mm. for our people, yeah. Yeah, no, cool. Um, with, with terms of the asset management, um, you know, we would look to, to, to employ or engage with the best people we can. Um, that may, may not be the, our own, it could be others. Um, it's always easy to spend money, but it's harder to make money from money. There's only a small pool of people we can do that. So we need to make, make sure that we have those people in those right places to look after the asset, to build it. Um, we've all seen all the bad examples of what not to buy through treaty settlement processes, uh, yeah, rugby league teams, um, but water bottling factories. So we see those examples, but those examples also exist in the Pākehā world too, what not to invest in. So we need to you know, just not focus on the mould, all the failures in the mouldy sphere. We need to look at all that wide spectrum to make sure, and use that wide spectrum to, to make sure um, that the people we use, you know, are doing it in such a way, and it also needs to reflect our values and principles. And there's some things like um, statements of investment, priorities and objectives. We need to work out that document in terms of what not to invest in, what to invest in, to make sure they're not contradicting those. And there's still a lot of work to be done at that, that ground level for that to occur. We, we have an online question. Okay. Uh, the role of the asset holding company within Model 2. Okay. So under Model 2, the role of the asset holding company will be to receive the um, financial proportion of the settlement, and that's broken up into the cash and interest into the forest companies. Um, Tata Tata has to be the entity that retains the relationship agreements with the Crown. So that's what you see the separation in the book. So basically the asset holder company takes the money and, and as I said, it, we use the best people available to grow that money as possible from the, the percentage that's retained within that asset holder company. So there you see a percentage is distributed to the individual ropu uh, for them to go off and do their thing. But also our set is left into an, the asset holder company. Now that Dividend from that asset holding company um, will need to fund Tato Tato, but over time it will need to be also used to um, as an income stream for Rōpū, but that may only occur at five yearly intervals or set time frames. So there's still policies to be developed around the detail of that. So we're working through that and what we would look and get the advice that we need to, to make sure that it's structured in such a way that uh, it is balanced for Tato Tato to, to grow, because we don't want to take too much out of Tata Tata, so it doesn't grow and it's going backwards because it's got to fund its activities and it's got to fund income generation. But at the same time, we need to balance out to make sure there's income to Rōpū's that didn't go on and do the, the things that they have set as priorities for themselves. Papai. Uh, kia ora tātou. Uh, Homai te paki paki for our chairperson who's been answering all the questions. We're mindful that we've all been here now for about one hour and a half, and that's, that's enough for now. Nera. Pai tēnā? I'll just ask Auntie at the front. Pai tēnā, nera ai, Auntie. Aye. There we go. Uh, what we'd like you to do is inside the booklet. You know, you've come in through the door, and in an hour and a half, we've asked you to become PhD students in terms of what this is all about. There's a lot that you need to sort of think about and digest from what you've heard, from what's online on our webpage, and what's inside this booklet. There are some questions uh, in the back. Uh, it would be great if you wrote down on the paper, ripped the page out and gave it to us, or you went online and filled it out. 
Straight after this, uh, after our karakia, uh, we go, we've got some refreshments out through this door over here. And uh, the trustees will have some time to spend with you uh, in case you've got any other questions. So I'm just going to pass to our chair. He's got closing remarks. And then we'll have our karakia. Kia uh, ora i tēnei wahanga i o tātou. Yeah, just reiterating the point that it, um, we need your feedback. Uh, we need everyone to get involved, no matter rangatahi, koma, to all aspects. Uh, we're trying to make sure that we get as many people involved in this process as possible. Um, uh, we just cannot have a select few making decisions for the greater whole. Yeah, but to do that, our members need to be engaged and need to be wanting to participate in this process. So hopefully, yep, uh, as PED said, um, write down your thoughts, um, put them in the booklet, write them down, go online, talk to a trustee. Um, as, as much as possible. So you engage with your, your own whānau too as well. Coming up over the Christmas time, we know that a lot of whānau come back from Australia overseas. Talk to them as well, because it impacts them as well. We want to make sure we get as wide as reach as possible. They all need to be involved in this process and have the opportunity to participate in providing feedback and then making the decision. Because at the end of the day, it's our members' decision. So thank you all for attending and thank you all for listening to the presentation and the question and answers. Uh, uh, we'll break uh, after Peter's had a cut again and then um, have, have a cup of tea and meet the one-on-one -on -one with the trustees. Thank you. So, Kahunganu and Ronga Mai Wahine have been really good at multiplying right across the whenua. Uh, and I know that in each one of each, each one of you has a phone and on there you've got a whole heap of networks. Uh, next Friday, we're in Rotorua. Saturday, we're in Hamilton. Sunday, we're in Auckland. Following weekend, on the Friday, we're in Palmerston North. On the Saturday, we're in Invercargill. And on the Sunday, we're in Christchurch, our last hui. All of your whānau, email them, tag them, text them, do whatever you have to do to get them registered and to get them engaged in our hui. Ko tākunei mihi ki a tātou katoa. Timata hea to tātunei hui ki rungi te rangi mārie. Ke o te pai, kai rungo te rangi mārie. Ke a tau, ke a tātou katoa. Te atawhai i o tātou i riki o i hukuraiti. Me te aroha o te atua, me te whiwhinga tahitanga ki te wairua tapu. Ake, ake, ake. Amine. And for the kai that is through this door and on the other side of that wall, uh, e, e hua whakapainga to tātou nei kai hei oranga mō mātou tinana. Whanga i o mātou wairua ki te taro te ora. Koi hu, koraiti tō tātou ariki. Amine, kia ora tātou.